my yard is teeming with a million different forageables. And I hope you're out there exploring to see what's coming to life in your area. There are so many edibles to take advantage of right now. And for me, this week, it is a myriad of the most beautiful little purple wild violets. So today, just around the corner, I'm going to show you a very simple recipe any of us can do to make wild violet jelly. It's so fun to welcome you to my outdoor and sort of makeshift studio today. This is under my carport because it's spring and you just never know when the next rain shower or whatever is gonna happen. It is a little bit windy today, but this is such a simple recipe. You could make it indoors or outdoors. And I thought how fun to get outside while we can. So you notice I have the Kelly kettle already going, one of my favorite things. It's warming up the water that we're going to need. But to make this recipe, you're only gonna need a few ingredients. And I wanna just name them off the bat so that you already know what to go collect. Of course, first and foremost, and the most labor intensive part of this is the collecting of wild violets. So get yourself a good basket, go out into your backyard or front yard or your neighbors if they're a kind neighbor that has a lot of wild violets and you're going to just want to look for these purple telltale little perfect viola violet type flowers you can see what i'm picking right here and you know it's going to be dark purple there are a few slight variations um, you'll want to look for them to to look very much like this but they might be a little darker or a little lighter purple either one will work and every now and then if you're extra special you might run into an, a white one and they almost look like little orchids but they're about as big as your fingernail they are so small now they have a very delicate flavor so you're going to need a lot of them for this recipe but they almost taste like grapes this is going to taste very similar to grape jelly when you get it done and if you love it as much as i do you'll know it's worth doing every spring from here forward now let me tell you something fun. If you happen to have red bud trees, but no purple wild violets, you can do this exact recipe using red buds off of your red bud tree. Make sure you know what you're looking at. In fact, we have an episode all about red buds. So I'll link it above and below and make sure you've watched that if you don't know about how to harvest those and eat them. But they make a wonderful red bud jelly. So. You need your basket full of wild violets, preferably at the, at the least, go ahead and collect about two cups worth, okay? And that's just loose packed. That doesn't have to be all pressed down, but about two cups is gonna be I ideal. Then you're going to wanna at least have two cups worth of good, clean water. And if you can get the kind that doesn't have fluoride in it, go ahead and do that, like bottled water or distilled water, one of those. Or if you have a Berkey water filter or something, go with that. So water, violets, you're going to want a little bit of lemon juice. I would say go ahead and have yourself ready with about two tablespoons and that's what I've got. You can use fresh squeezed or store-bought from concentrate. Either one will do. And then I want you to have two cups worth of raw sugar if you can get it. Any sugar will do but I've got the raw organic sugar is, is best if you can get that. And then the last thing that you may not be familiar with is this Sure Gel. This is um, premium fruit pectin, and that's going to make it get all nice and jelly-like, right? So you need fruit pectin. Now on a different episode, we'll show you how to make your own fruit pectin from apples. It's so super easy. It's one of my favorite things, but for the ease of this, we're going to use in the box fruit pectin. You just need one box of this, okay? Now, once you have all your ingredients assembled, that's all you need to do. You're going to dump that basket full of violets into some sort of a jar like this. And just so you know, I'm aware that I only collected about a cup worth in this right now, just to show you how to do it because I already had some steeping. You'll understand why here in a moment. So you're going to take your fresh violets and put them in a jar and then we want to pour over them. So collect two cups of these and you're going to pour over them two cups of boiling water in a jar that's able to handle the heat. So a ball jar or mason jar is just perfect for that. 
and I have some water already heated here to boiling in my Kelly kettle. I'm going to measure it out though. I have one of my grandmother's old Tupperware measurers that has a two cup mark on it. So I'm going to measure that out before I pour it in here just so I get it right. Give me just a minute. All right. And I know I'm shy on the violets, not quite two cups, so I'm going to do equal amount of water and that's going to be not quite two cups on this either, just, just for the sake of this demonstration because I'm showing this to you because I want you to see what happens. You're going to pour the water in here and it might not turn the color you're expecting, but it will definitely turn blue. So let's, let's watch it and it's going to immediately turn that water kind of a beautiful blue color. Do you see that? Just a nice, give it a good stir and make sure all those violets get down in there really nice. It's pretty simple so far. I hope you're following well. So two cups of violets, two cups of water, get it stirred up really nice in that boiling water. And then we're going to preferably let this sit overnight. You want it to at least come to room temperature and then you want it to wait for a couple of hours before you use it. It would just be even more ideal to wait all the way overnight so you get every bit of goodness out of those. I hope you can see how beautiful that water is already turning kind of a, a light blue there. And it's interesting depending on how dark your violets are, because some varieties are not quite as purple as others. This might look a little bit blue at first and then get darker pink. And then some people say it even turns kind of a pale green color by morning. And you're thinking, what color is this jello jelly going to be? Don't worry, there's a magic that's gonna happen here in just a minute. So after you've had that, we're gonna pretend that that has steeped for overnight, all right? And that's why I have some waiting over here that I wanna show you that I've already had steeping. I want you to see what the product looks like that's freshly put in there. And then here's some that has steeped for quite a while. And you notice it's not as pretty. <laughs> the violets kind of lose their shape. You can see that the water is anywhere between a blue and kind of a green color. And that's all right, that's what we're expecting. Let me get it stirred up so that you see it good over here. It's just kind of a nice pale blue. And I'll be honest with you, this, this batch right here, I've only let set for a few hours. This has not set overnight. If I had done that, I would have an even richer colored uh, jelly to show you at the end of this. But we don't have that luxury today, and that's just fine. You can at least get the idea of it here. But what's your, what you're going to do after it's steeped for at least a few hours and made a nice violet tea, at this point you could just drink it. It's an enjoyable tea with just a little bit of sugar in it. Or at this point you could turn it into wild violet simple syrup by just adding some sugar and going ahead and stirring it down until it turns into a nice thick syrup. That's what a violet simple syrup would be. But for our purpose today, what we're going to do, and I have the, the little pan that comes with the Kelly kettle, I'm going to strain it with a strainer and some, uh, and some cloth right into this, okay? So I brought in my little funnel from indoors. I'm putting in my grandma's strainer and it has a few holes in it that are extra big. So I'm even going to line it with just a little bit of cheesecloth to make sure I get every one of those out. And then, and I've used this and washed it a few times so it has a little bit of staining on it. You don't worry about that. Um, once we've got it strained, then we'll go to the next step. So. Let me see if I can show this to you up close. I'll get it over there in front so it's a little easier to see. All right, I'm just gonna pour it through that and you'll see the blueness of it. Look at that beautiful blue color. Isn't that pretty? All right. I'll press it with the wooden spoon just to make sure I get all the good juice out. It's not very pretty, but I'll tell you the chickens were watching me really close as I picked all of these today and they will be happy to help me uh, by eating all of that right there. So I'll be feeding that to them. 
Okay, now we've got that to work with. And what we need to do now, oh, that's a beautiful color. Look at that gorgeous color. Isn't that stunning? I've got to show you up close though what happens next because it gets really pretty here in the next moment or two. I'm going to stoke the fire and I'll show you what this turns when we put the lemon juice in it. Give me just a minute. All right, you see the two cups of liquid that is now room temperature because it steeped it for a few hours. You can see how beautiful and blue it is. And what I'm going to do next is make it purple. And when I put in this lemon juice, just watch the color change. It's just amazing how it Woo, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Totally different. All of a sudden we have hot pink. <laughs> and so now what we need to do is bring this to a boil and then we'll add our last two ingredients. So I'm gonna put it back over this Kelly Kettle uh, little stove that came with it. And let me see if I can do that without any issues. All right, we're gonna give this just a couple of minutes to come to a complete boil, and then we're going to add the next ingredient, which is the equal amounts of sugar to the amount of water we have. So two cups of sugar for the two cups of water that are in there. And we're gonna start having jelly here real soon. Okay, I brought my whisk out from my grandma. I love this old thing. And you can see that it's boiling good. So what we're going to do next is whisk in that two cups of sugar that we have standing by waiting its turn. And we'll just go kind of slow here. It'll of course make it cool enough that it stops boiling, but I'll whisk that in and get some more and whisk it in. And after we put in this full two cups of sugar, then we're gonna put in that pectin. So kind of one right after the other, and then you're going to bring it back to a full boil again. So just in case you happen to be doing it on a Kelly kettle, which most of you won't. Most of you will be on a stove inside, I hope. But if you do it on a Kelly kettle like this, make sure you have plenty of little firewood standing nearby because you do need to, once we get this boiling again, we need it to stay boiling for one minute and then we get it to a hard boil for one full minute while you stir constantly and that'll get it ready to be poured into our little jars and be our jelly that we need it to be. It's that simple, but you do have to do a little prior planning just to make sure that you're on top of things. All right, I've got all the sugar in there now and I'm going to get it all whisk in so the sugar is pretty much dissolved and then I'm going to put in this box of fruit pectin. It does not have to be a full boil when we put the pectin in. You just need the sugar to already be dissolved. And I think we're about there, really. Few floaties, but if you're camping or cooking outside and you don't have floaties in whatever you're eating, there's probably something wrong because it's just part of the, part of the adventure of it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this fruit pectin in. Again, in another episode, we'll make our own fruit pectin from apple and you'll love it. All right, but here we go on this. And this is when you really do like to whisk it in because the fruit pectin, its, it's whole purpose is to make it kind of jelly-like and so it can clump up if you aren't whisking it. And that's why you wanna whisk it continually as you're pouring it in. It's already thickening, I can tell. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I don't know if you can see the color of that. I'll try and lift it up with the wooden spoon so you can see a good backdrop color, but it is gorgeous. <laughs> as soon as it comes to a boil, that's when I need to stir it constantly.
If you have one of these old fashioned whisks, you know that it was used for whisking, but also for separating the egg whites. So if you were to break an egg in there, it holds the, the yolk and lets the egg white fall through. You probably knew that already, but I had to remember, I had to be reminded by my grandmother that that's what that was for. It's getting close to a boil. Let me clean up my mess around here. And I also want to show you with this spoon, see if you can see the color better. Do you see that? Isn't that gorgeous? Hot pink. Sometimes it'll be absolutely purple, depending on how long it's steeped and how deep the color of the violets are that you've used. And while I wait for that to get to that boil that we're waiting for, that's the pretty much the last step of this, I just want to explain to you that you're gonna need some jars. And you could use big jars, but this is so precious and so labor intensive, if you wanna call it that, out there on your knees picking those violets. I personally like to choose very small jars. <laughs> I'll show them to you. I love these little things. You can get these. These are, um, these are perfect mason jars, but it says love across the front. I think they come in four packs. You can find them online. If I see a link to it, I'll make sure I put it down below this video. But they carry just about four ounces each. And because this is so precious and I like to give it as gifts so that people can taste spring for the first time, these make the perfect thing for you to do. And also, if you wanted, you could can this to let it keep for a good long while. Now, I would say this is a fantastic refrigerator jelly. Some people call it that, where just if you make it fresh, it's always best if it's not canned and you just put it in the refrigerator and eat it like within the first three weeks or so. Um, it'll be perfect. But if you wanna go ahead and put it through your water bath canner so that it keeps indefinitely or at least for a few years, do that, it's wonderful. I, I rarely make a big enough batch that I think it's worthwhile to get out the water bath canner. But these little jars make perfect for gift giving. All right, it's really close to boiling, but I've got to stoke this fire with a little more wood. Yep, I see it. You see the little bubbles forming? It's much thicker now, so the bubbles are different than it would be if it was very thin. But that means it's time for me to start stirring it. And as soon as it comes to a hard boil, I want it to be timed for one full minute. Now let me just tell you, if you aren't familiar with what the definition of hard boil is, it's kind of like, it's, it's when it boils, but no matter how much you stir it, the bubbles are not calmed. It's, it's still boiling hard, even when you're stirring it and trying to get those bubbles to go away. That's when it's considered a hard boil. So it's about there, I, I'm seeing it, I think you're seeing it too. And now I'm just going to time up for about 60 seconds and we're gonna let it thicken up before we pour it into our little jars. Some people say putting a wood spoon across the top will keep it from ever boiling out. I don't know if that's true, but I do try it. I just don't want all the little crud on that spoon to get down into it. It hasn't boiled over yet. All right, I think we're about there. Let me just feel of it. Still feels pretty thin, but I know that we've done the process correctly and I'm not worried. I think it's gonna work just great. That's beautiful. All right, so all we have to do now is get our funnel back out and we're going to pour it into our little jars and then let it set up. I have used many of my little jars, so I only have five available, and I'm hoping it fits perfectly in five. 
If it doesn't, I'll just pour the rest in something else and eat it first. But there I've got those ready. And I ran inside and got myself a little funnel that's more along the size that is needed for these little jars. And you can watch me either have a complete disaster here or be successful at this. We'll see. It'll be one of the two. <laughs> I think I'm going to go get a ladle. Hold on. I don't want to, I don't want you to witness a terrible disaster. I'm going to get a ladle and put it through there. All right, do this with me. I'm going to take this ladle and see if I'm good enough to do it without pouring it all over everything. Is that beautiful or what? Hot pink. Sometimes it's purple, purple. Sometimes it's hot pink. And every time it's just fun. And I already got a little taste of it on my finger and it tastes even better than homemade grape jelly. I promise. I'll make sure to link the full recipe down below. But also, I just want you to know, you might need a little bit of troubleshooting help. So make sure you've checked out that recipe and the tips and tricks that are going to make this a success for you. Just because I thought there might be a few little floaties in it, I went ahead and am straining it just one more time through a little strainer here. But you don't really need to do that. It's nice and thick. I can tell it's going to be just perfect. I can't believe that this is almost perfectly the right amount for all five of these little jars. And there's just a smidgen left for me to pour in here and enjoy probably straight up <laughs> just so I can enjoy tasting it at the end of this. I'm gonna put these lids on and yes, they because it's so hot, it's like freshly boiled water, they are gonna suck down and make a seal, but don't trust that as though they are shelf stable indefinitely like really canned goods should be. Um, but they will be ready to go in the fridge. It's too hot for me to handle, so I gotta get the towel over here. But these will suck down as though they are canned in a canner. Aren't those beautiful? They're also going to thicken up. I can tell they're already thickening right now as we're letting them cool down just a little bit. But within an hour or two, they will already be fully cooled and fully ready to be spread on homemade biscuits. I'll tell you one thing, there's almost nothing better you're going to put in your mouth than a fresh homemade biscuit with a little bit of fresh butter on it and then slather it with that wild violet jelly that you've just made. Oh my word, it is the perfect taste of spring. I just think you're gonna love it so much. At least make sure you have a little leftover like I do here so that you can taste it for yourself. Go watch the biscuit video so you have biscuits to put your wild violet jelly on. And I hope I see you next time. But until we join next week for another episode, Will you go out and find one person somewhere in the world that needs you to be their blessing? And would you be a blessing to them today? Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>Hey, before you go, I would love to share a quick word of scripture with you. This is out of the second to the last chapter in the entire Bible. It's Revelations chapter 21 and it's verses six and seven. It's actually God himself speaking. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. And to the one who conquers, he will have this heritage and I will be his God, and he will be my son. What a promise. It's getting dark out there. Now go out and glow.